All right, um, so let's start today's problem. Today's problem is uh, 543 diameter of binary tree. Uh, the problem is uh, pretty straightforward. Given a binary tree, we need to compute the length of the diameter of the tree. The diameter here means the length of the longest pass between any two nodes in the tree. Uh, the pass may or may not pass through the root. So uh, in th the example here, we have a tree with uh, five nodes, three different levels, and the longest uh, pass has, actually there are two uh, longest pass, 314, uh, 24, and 3125. Uh, each, each of these paths have four nodes and three edges, and the length of the paths is uh, defined as the number of edges between them, so it's uh, three here. Uh, so that's the question and uh, one of the examples. So uh, the way to work with this is to think, if I'm at a particular node here, what kind of information do I need to, uh, you know, calculating, in this case, the diameter, the, the length of the path that's coming across me, uh, and what kind of information I need to provide to my parent to help him to calculate the he, the, the, the longest lens that passing through it. So for, for myself, um, what I need is the lens from the maximum lens from the left side, the maximum lens from the right side, and uh, um, so that uh, when, when I'm asking myself what kind of a lens I can have, that's going through me, it will be the left plus the right, the lens, the, the answers that I get from the both sides. And for me to help my parents to figure the same question out, uh, I need to pass the information, which is the maximum lens that um, from me, myself, to any, uh, to the leaf nodes of the tree. So it's either the one plus the lens from the left or one plus the lens from the right. So that gives us a quite nice recursive kind of relationship. Um, so for each node, I return that information. And for when, when I'm at uh, each node, uh, I will use the information I get from the children to do whatever I need to calculate the path. And I, you can imagine we can have a, a sort of like a global variable to keep track of the maximum lens I have seen so far and just uh, work my way up to to the top. So code, code this algorithm up in, in recursive methods, it, method calls, it's um, easy enough. Uh, the trickier part is to, um, you know, some questions they would ask you to follow up, a, a follow up question is to maybe try to c implement the same thing iteratively. Uh, so, so we would just uh, directly go into the iterative method instead of code, wasting time coding up the recursive one. Um, for this to code it up uh, in an iterative way, um, because the the so just to, to think about what kind of uh, tree traversal method will we will we be using for for the iterative method. Um, it's clear that it's post-order traversal because um, for each of the node here, we need information from both sides. So we have to visit the children's uh, first and the very last is the node itself. So in that case, it's not in order, um, which the node is happening, the visit in the node is between the, the two children's. It's not pre-order. Uh, in that case, I will visit myself first and then to my children. So it's post-order. Um, the node itself, uh, the calculation around the node itself happens the last. And um, um, so usually uh, if we just using one stack, it's possible to do post-order traversal, but the code is, um, uh, 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 at least the, the, the way that I know, it's kind of clunky. Um, if I would be allowed to use a little bit more space to have a hash map to keep track of the nodes that I have visited, 
and uh, in this case I sharply it's actually desired that I keep track of the lens that uh, maximum lens I can get from every node um, if I can keep track of that when I calculating the uh, diameters of any nodes I would just look at look at that information up from the hash map so I would have a hash map to keep track of the all the maximum lens I can get from uh, each, each single node in our um, tree and use that to help the uh, iterative uh, code uh, because we we can uh, we can just try to visit the left first and go back here and if we have visited left then we go right and the, the third time we uh, the the second time we back in node one because we already visited those two based on the hash map lookups readout then we will do some calculation on node one so that's the usage of uh, a hash map to help us do this uh, post order traversal yeah so let's code it up um, yeah the time time space complexity in in our case the time and space is um, o n o order of n um, because we we basically um, for each of the node we are visiting it uh, at the most uh, three times um, even though uh, the first two times is just checking checking um, information about the children's and uh, expanding the stacks uh, the only the last time we would do some actual calculation around node itself but uh, um, and anyhow it's uh, a linear time um, time complexity but the space is also order of n because we have to just keep that hash map to uh, to keep keep track of the informations and uh, you can argue that the in-memory stack is also uh, order of n um, yeah uh, okay uh, but but the recursive method uh, the space is also um, the worst the case is also order of n uh, if the tree is uh, somehow degraded into a singly linked list um, then it's also order of n in the worst case so there is um, if we we don't have any information about the tree being balanced or not, then um, I, I I don't see a clear preference uh, over the recursive method than than this particular iterative method that we're gonna code it up. So um, as we said, we're just gonna have a global variable to um, keep track of the maximum lens. Um, and uh, we'll have a um, hash map um, so we're going to use a default dictionary here because uh, for each of the leaf node it, uh, it doesn't have any children so when we query the their lens so ideally we would just get the zero here and uh, with a default dict here um, any key that's not in the hash map uh, when we specify the default type the factory uh, the function whatever I, I forgot the key net key, uh, key uh, the argument name um, if, if the key doesn't exist in there when we just grab the value uh, we'll get a zero here and uh, that's now our um, and the third variable we need is a stack yeah uh, starts with the root, only the root node in there. And in every iteration, uh, we check the top node. We don't necessarily need to pop it because uh, remember we need to visit to the left first. Then uh, I don't have enough space. I'm, I'm blocking the code. Okay. So node is equal to stack minus one meaning the top top element in the stack um, if node the left and node the left not in depth uh, which means that uh, uh, it's the first time we visit this node uh, when we check the left yes we have a left children 
and when we look at uh, the hash map, no, we haven't uh, really do any calculation around this node yet. So what we would do is to um, put that onto our task list. Let's just put in one line to um, make the... Yeah, it's not perfectly compliant, but uh, when I when I do this um, code this way is because it's um, it, it reads more natural to me. Um, so else if this is else if, um, and the very last the condition is um, uh, the only possible here in this else statement is that um, um, I have visited the left. Um, either I don't have a left node, you know, I'm not going here, or if I have, but I already calculate the stuff that I need from my left, and it's not the same situation with the right children with respect to the right children as well. So I either don't have any of this, or if I have them, I, I calculate the, the the information I need already uh, from uh, for both of those. Then. It's the third time I'm visiting this node, very likely. Then I will actually need to do, do some work. Uh, the first thing is to pop it up from the stack because after after this, we no longer need this node in our stack anymore, and we need to get the um, get the depths from uh, from this hash map. As I said, uh, because we're using a default dig with the integer here, um, meaning that if the left node or right children doesn't exist, that this will give us zero and zero here. And uh, for so when we know that uh, the lens from the left and the right, um, the lens from myself that I'm gonna report to my parent is. Um, is the one plus the maximum from either side, right? So if the right side lens is longer, I'll just add myself to it and just return that lens of that pass uh, up to my parents. Um, so so that's the this this line here. And the very last thing we need to do is to uh, updating this global variable. And uh, this would just be left plus right. And once we process every node, we should just return uh, maximum dimension. Yeah, diameter. Yeah. Uh, let, let me just do some final checking if there is um, any problem. This is getting too long, um, so even even one liner re reads more easily. Uh, let's actually give them in two lines. Uh, let's do some quick checking if there is any potential problems. It doesn't really see that uh, the the root is gonna be uh, no or not, so we better check for that. Um, we can we can do this uh, here. Um, so if, if there is a new node uh, root that's been now null root being passed in here we we will populate the stack with something in there so the while loop actually get executed otherwise um, we'll start with an uh, empty stack we're pretty, uh, pretty much just going to ignore all this line and just return this maximum dimension default value zero here okay uh, let's try to see if it works yeah uh, yeah it works just a little bit slow hmm. maybe maybe recurs recursive version gets better um, but uh, uh, you can code it up by yourself okay so that's uh, that's the solution to this question here today bye bye